Okay, so can it be normal to have low blood sugar during fasting, especially multi-day fasting, if you're fasting more than 24 hours? I'll share some personal experience about this. It's kind of a common question, but I'll, I'll share what my personal experience has been and kind of the medical perspective as well. I'm a PA, which is similar to a doctor, so I can kind of share a little bit about that and what the reasons are behind uh, the blood sugar fluctuations and stuff. All right, so low blood sugar. What would we consider low blood sugar? Well, on the scale that we use in the United States, the normal blood sugar they generally talk about is 70 to 100 if you're not eating. Um, so that's a so-called fasting blood sugar. <laughs> but that, that just means fasting probably for like eight hours. Um, so not a long fast, obviously. In other words, like overnight um, is what they would consider fasting for a blood test usually. Occasionally they might say like 12 hours. Um, so that's like the normal range, but that's making a variety of assumptions. That is making a, the assumption that you're not doing a prolonged fast because that, that normal range was obviously not created based on people doing prolonged fasting. It was created based on people who are not doing prolonged fasting. And so that normal range doesn't really apply anymore once you're doing a prolonged fast. You can pretty much throw it out the window. Um, <laughs> so if you're someone like me who doesn't have diabetes, um, so you don't tend to run high blood sugar, um, and then you do a prolonged fast, by the second or third day, You'll, your blood sugar will probably be below 70 at least part of the day. For example, um, on, on some of my prior fasts that I've done, so I fasted for about a week and I measured my blood sugar um, multiple times, but one time in particular I'll talk about. So I measured my blood sugar twice every day during the seven-day fast, and sometimes it was kind of in that so-called normal range, you know, like in the 70s a lot, occasionally in the 80s, maybe even in the uh, up around 90, but probably only on the first day or so. But it also regularly was down into the 50s, well, 60s, 50s, and even the 40s. So the lowest I got was something like 43. Um, I think that's milligrams per deciliter, which is, again, the United States scale. Um, so if you're in Europe or something, it would be a slightly different number. Um, so that that's me, someone without diabetes, on a prolonged fast. Did I have symptoms of low blood sugar? No, I did not. And that's because my body was transitioning into fat burning mode and using mainly ketones for energy in the brain and body fat for energy as well. So ketones can replace blood sugar, not completely, because there are certain parts of your body that need blood sugar, um, but and they can't just run on ketones, but ketones can largely replace, so replace a big percentage of your blood sugar and you can just run on ketones instead. So that's what happens during a prolonged fast and that's why it is actually normal to get so-called low blood sugar during prolonged fasting. Um, now a couple quick caveats. What if you're someone with diabetes and you tend to run high on blood sugar? Well, then you're probably not gonna drop this low. You're probably not gonna drop into the 40s. Um, if you tend to be at 200 on a normal day, then you might drop down a little lower than that, or it might fluctuate all over the place. There's a lot of unpredictability with people with diabetes because their body just doesn't regulate blood sugar very well. And whether you're eating or whether you're fasting, it sometimes does some crazy unpredictable things, um, including like the nighttime blood sugar and stuff like that, all those, those peaks and valleys that you can get. Um, and then people who are on insulin, when they first start coming off insulin, which you would need to do for prolonged fasting, you need to reduce your dose or come off it completely. Um, they'll often have some issues where the blood sugar is kind of fluctuating a lot and maybe getting lower than what is comfortable for them um, initially just because their body is a little out of whack um, in terms of blood sugar regulation. Um, so it's going to be a little different if you have diabetes, but in, in general, your blood sugar is going to trend lower and more towards the normal range being below 100 when you're fasting. So if it's below 100, that's a good thing. Um, but if you feel, if you're worried that it's too low, what if it gets low and you're, you're concerned? Well, just eat some training wheels. Training wheels are those little bits of food or types of food that don't really disrupt your fast. So you could just eat some chia seeds. You could have a few olives. You could have a little handful of nuts and then continue your fast. Those are little things that can just kind of tide you over. And so if your blood sugar is in the 40s like me, I wasn't concerned, but if you're concerned, um, then one thing you could do is eat something, but eat something that doesn't break your fast, doesn't end your fast. So that's what the training wheels are. So there's a lot of different things that you can use as training wheels. I just mentioned a couple examples. So anything that's very low in sugar and carbs, and then you don't eat very much of it. That's basically the, what that's all about. Okay, so that answers the question, can it be normal to have low blood sugar, so-called so -called low blood sugar during a prolonged fast? There you go, that's the answer. Speaking of extended fasting, I've got a video right here that talks about a bunch of health benefits you can get from extended fasting, and then a playlist here that has a bunch of beginner fasting tips to help you get a smooth start with intermittent fasting. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.